So it's 3 a.m. Monday morning. And I've gotten, I'm becoming a cat owner now. I've gotten used to when he'll come into my bedroom and he'll hop on the bed and he'll be like, ow, and walk, ow. Over, and walk over me and stuff. And I've gotten to the point where it's like, yeah, yeah, shit, what the fuck are you? And I go, I roll over, go back to sleep. This morning, he hops up on the bed and I'm like, yeah, yep, yeah, wait. Something smells bad. And I look over and normally this, this floofy white thing normally... He's white, as you can see. He's white. He's got little yes. specks of, of, of red on his face and whatnot. This morning, he had brown on him. There was a chunk this big. I'm not even making I'm not, uh, this big around a chunk of poop attached to his butt and smeared on other parts of him. Yeah, been there. Now, what happened was this. Apparently, this is the best of my assertion I can glean. He was taking a poop, and the piece of poop did not come out. So he decided his best solution to this was to rub his butt on the <laughs> ground, and this would get the poop to go away. It did not. What it did was, it was like a piece of... Did you ever have a Play-Doh Fun Factory when you were a kid? Uh, no, actually. No, we didn't. We were taking a, place, a piece of Play-Doh and rolled it into like a little cylinder and then squished it flat. That poop hanging out. It just pancaked the poop. He pancaked the poop onto his butt and ground it into his long floofy fur and then decided that, well, that didn't work. Let's try harder. Let's go get the human and maybe he, he can help. Well, before he did that, he scraped poop all over the carpet. He scraped poop on the bed. Oh, he no. scraped poop. He rubbed his butt everywhere in a desperate attempt to get rid of the poop. And I watched him try to do this after I got up. I'm like, Randy, what are you doing? He's like, I don't know. He's rubbing his butt. <laughs> and now I've, what he, part of the problem was as he was rubbing his butt, he was wrapping his tail between his legs. Oh. So he was, in fact, not removing the poop. No. He was just making it worse. Did he have to learn what the bathtub is for again? I yes, imagine? he did. There was he was just covered in it. Every there was poop everywhere. Now I posted on Twitter. Someone woke me up this morning at 3 a.m. covered in poop, not naming names. And it was very surprising how many of my friends, like uh little Karibo and Rolo T and a bunch of other people replied to me go with, with like sorry. My bad. And I'm like, <laughs> really? This is what you want to take? It was like, I am Spartacus with poop. It's like, no, I was covered in poop. No, I was covered Amen. in poop. I Those was covered. get crazy around Shermer. Is, is really, this is, this is the hill you want to die on? Oh, you little, you little flea bag. Miracle now needs pretty regular baths because she's, she's a little old lady. She's 13. So she doesn't, when, when cats get, old enough and kind of creaky enough they don't bathe as well as they should they don't spend three hours a day licking themselves so after a while miracle gets kind of greasy looking and starts to stink so we have to put her in the kitchen sink for torture poor thing oh yeah he doesn't like he doesn't like the bag. she does she's very tolerant because she's used to it now and we get it over with as quick as we can and then i wrap her in a towel and a blanket and just cuddle her while she shivers but she does not enjoy it. I tried the hairdryer once. <laughs> he didn't like that. No, cats don't like that noise. You did like, not Like, Mirva wouldn't care, hairdryer. probably, because she's deaf, but that noise. And weirdly, aerosol spray cans. Cats, you spray, like, fucking hairspray or whatever. Like, death from above. I don't know what it is about aerosol cans. They hate that shit. <laughs> yeah, so... This is what but I, I, I enjoy your Twitter now because I'm like, oh, he's learning all the joys of being a cat, a cat servant because you're not really a cat owner. That's yeah. You're just their 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 servant. And much like being a servant to a rich person, they're incredibly dumb and entirely unreasonable. Yes. You furry idiot. <laughs> you are. You are furry idiot. But you're my bitch. 
So who's really the idiot here? Why did I get you? Because he's cute. He is, but he's dumb as a box of rocks. All right. Well, now that we've had the update on poop being everywhere. Yeah, we seem to do every our, our like cold open changes over time. Because for like a solid month, we did updates on the hole in my leg. Yeah. Now we do updates on what the cats are doing. I guess for a while we did the update on what Bridget's doing today. And, you know, and someday now. it'll be what happened on today's Matlock rerun. And I, I like that one. And how pissed we are that the, we missed the early bird at Denny's. I, I like Andy Griffith. He's a nice man. He's a nice man. I like him. He's, he's good. I like the Andy Griffith. That Matlock. That he's Matlock. Good. He's good. All right, well, let's do the intro. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And, uh, God damn it. Somebody just said they missed the leg hole stories. I don't. No, the leg hole, that, that was a bad thing. The leg hole. That was hole, not fun. The leg I hole. still have a scar this big on my leg, surrounded by a weird little halo of like differently colored skin. They were like, no, nah, you won't have a scar this big. Meanwhile, people who are just tuning in for the first time are going, what the fuck is a leg hole? Oh, I've seen shit, man. She's seen shit. Fuck spiders. All right, let's see. So, not only did this happen again, not only it happened within a relatively short space of time, but we got video. Yay? No, not yay. Fuck yay. There is no yay here. Oh, I saw this. Everybody saw this and everybody sent it to me. Your favorite website is hailing this as the new, fun, harmless prank. What fucking go fuck Gawker. I can't wait for uh, um, Hulk Hogan to take ownership. A prank caller tricked workers at a Minnesota Burger King into smashing the windows of the restaurant to keep it from exploding. Police said employees at the restaurant in the Minneapolis suburb of Coon Rapids... No, not like that. No, no. It was a word before it was that word. Yeah. Uh, got the call Friday night from someone claiming to be with the fire department. So already th the fire. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Already we're, we're, we're in a bad place because the fire department normally doesn't call you. You call them. Right. Or if they know something you don't, they're just going to show up. Yeah. They're not going to call you to tell you that the building you're in is about to explode. They're going to come there. Yeah, because that's and what personally they... remove you from said building. The caller said the restaurant could explode, so they needed to relieve the pressure. The manager and other employees believed the caller and smashed all the windows on the ground floor. This one, okay, so this one goes above and beyond because it wasn't just a bunch of employees. The yeah. manager. So I have to sit there and think, if you're an employee, they're going, boss, are you totally sure? Smash the windows. I feel like, I mean, I guess if your boss tells you to do it, fuck, whatever. But if there was, this is an establishment that cooks things. Mm -hmm. If there was enough gas... Uh -huh. potentially blow up the building. Mm -hmm. One, don't you think you would smell gas? And two, don't and two, you... Don't you think you would notice when you went to flame bro broil a Whopper that... You were on fire yourself. Right. Like, you would notice a gas problem that severe <clears throat> before anybody had to tell you about it. I promise you. That's not a smell you can miss. <laughs> Fuck, I, I'm, I'm not super domesticated. Dan does all the cooking around here. Otherwise, we would starve. We have a gas stove. 
And I can't tell you, like, more than once I've had to text him at work and be like, what's the stove doing? Why is it? I, like, text him pictures of the dial and be like, what do I put it on to boil water? It's and not it a microwave, And if he tries to realize that when you turn the thing for the stove, you can't, you don't just turn it on. You turn it to light it and then turn it on. Yeah, you have to, to click the lighter. So I had, like, a pot of water on the stove one day. I don't think I've ever told you this, actually. <laughs> And the whole place starts to reek of gas. And I'm like, well, that's not good. And I go in, my water is not boiling at all. And I realize the stove is not lit. I'm just pouring gas out into our home. I, I don't really, I don't really do the cooking around here. Oh my God, why aren't you dead by now? Because I have a Dan. <laughs> And when he's going to be away for more than, like, 12 hours, he leaves me conveniently packed meals and directions. <laughs> That's why I'm not dead. So, I'm, I'm just saying you would notice a gas problem. But the man, they got the man. So, even if anyone in that in that store had a brain in their head and worked there, the manager overrode them. Because you you worked at the retail level. You worked in, in, in food service level. You know your manager will tell you to do obviously stupid shit. And you oh, can't yeah. say no. No matter how stupid or ridiculous. So kind of get a little beaten down by it. So if the manager says, okay, I want you to smash all the windows. You're like, okay, well, sure, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you've wrecked the fucking place. Really? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think at that point they'd be really. It'd be sort of like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. It's it's fine. I have no, my soul is dead. You are accustomed to getting pretty stupid directions. But in this case, the best part is none of them can be fired except the manager. Because if the manager tells you to do something, it's not your fault. Uh, I mean... Do we really want to go the just following orders route? <laughs> you when know what? There's gas involved. If you get to blame your, you know what? I'm, I'm. I haven't pissed off the Nazis this week, so you know. If you get to blame your manager for this shit and get the owner to to fire his ass. Yeah. I don't think it's a good idea to mention Nazis and ovens. Just saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's a good idea to be like, well, I was just following orders with that. <sighs> gas problem. <laughs> I don't know if that's the defense I would use. That's all I'm saying. Now, what's what's insane is, read the, the, the last paragraph is, a similar call to Burger King in Morro Bay, California, about a purported gas leak resulted in $35,000 in damages. Not only employees smashed the windows, but a manager went so far as to ram his car into the building. How's that going to help? Your car's full of gasoline. Police in Tucson, Arizona, say several similar plant prank calls were placed to Jack in the Box restaurants. Fully workers at one store. A similar incident happened at Wendy's in Phoenix in late January. So, this is the new swatting, I guess. Yeah. Because people are falling for it like crazy. <sighs> I mean, I guess I get like, if someone calls you, you might panic if your manager is an idiot, but a little bit of common sense goes a long way. If your building was about to blow up and the fire department knew it, they wouldn't call you and keep you on the phone to talk about it. They would come there and remove you because it is literally their job to make sure the building doesn't blow up. And if it does, that there's nobody inside who's going to die. That's what they do professionally, sometimes for volunteer, but they, they are in the business of not letting fire kill people. Yeah, I think this is taking have it your way just a little too far. Yeah. Well, more tonight. So <clears throat> we've grown up with with lots of especially Batman, but lots of other ninja stories where this happens. The smoke bomb. The, the 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 old idea is you throw down a smoke bomb and smoke goes everywhere and you disappear and eluding your pursuers entirely. They have no idea where you went. We're doing a little little Mythbuster-esque event. Um, does that work in real life? 
I'm guessing no. It does not, especially when instead of a smoke bomb, you try to use fire extinguishers. Oh. Burglar sprayed himself with fire extinguisher to elude arrest. Fernando Sheriff's deputies arrested a man who reportedly broke into a Spring Hill store, then sprayed himself with fire extinguishers in an effort to elude capture. Was he worried about being captured by fire? Authorities say on March 4th, Anthony Dixon, 18, turned off the power to a family dollar store from the outside of the building, then used a cinder block to break the store's front glass window. Deputies were alerted uh, by a 911 call from someone in the area who heard the sound of breaking glass, then saw Dixon running from the store. A subsequent search led to the, uh, for the suspects led to the deputies in the area where a large amount of a white powdery substance had been sprayed, as well as two spent fire extinguishers stolen from a nearby apartment complex. So what he did was he broke into the family dollar to steal cigarettes. He ran from the cops, went into an apartment complex, but was like, shit, how do I get away? So he sprayed a fire extinguisher everywhere to make his own smoke cloud and tried to run. But all you did was mark yourself. Tips from bystanders eventually led to Dixon, who they noted had a white powdery substance on his legs. They took Dixon into custody without further incident. All that for cigarettes? <clears throat> like, I know they're expensive. Well, yeah. But fuck. For the cigarettes. You know what's more expensive? Jail. Defense attorney. Yeah. Jail is very expensive. Yeah. More expensive. Than, and you know what you don't get in jail? Hmm. Cigarettes. cigarettes. That's a funny myth from all the movies that, like, cigarettes are current. You don't really get cigarettes well, in most jails. You do, but if they find you with them... Right. They're not happy about it. This is not... This is what happens when you watch too much television and think it can work in real life. Yeah. I will elude my pursuers in a cloud of smoke. You might as well have tried the Jedi mind trick. Which might have worked better than this. Yeah. Like, maybe they at least would have laughed long enough for you to run for it. And you wouldn't have been covered in an incriminating substance. Have you ever gotten the chemical smoke stuff on you? I have not. Amazingly, considering the story I just told you about my stove. Yeah, it's amazing. And you I might set the inside of my oven on fire in my old condo. Yeah, that stuff is nasty. That is, it's, it's like, all right, imagine talcum powder plus cornstarch. Plus, like, I don't know, there's some sort of viscous element to it. So it's powdery and smoky, but sticky at the same time. Ew. Yeah, it's nasty shit. And don't breathe any of it in. No, that oh, I do not. Oh, you will regret that forever. Because it's, it's nasty. And it doesn't help the situation. I, it's, I bet he was expecting it to be like, you know, like a fog machine, like, you know, like in a television show. But if he did, ask yourself, how does he think that puts out fire? <laughs> well, if you look at a TV show, see them setting off a, a, a fire extinguisher. Yeah, there's a big white cloud. It puts but out this poofy cloud, cloud. Of something. It doesn't put it out. Does, a, does it put out the fire? Fire extinguishers don't put out poofy clouds. They put out this the stream that slowly turns it's not like a poofy cloud more much as a goth club at 2 a.m when they've smoked the fuck out of everything in their pockets and there's this haze everywhere that's really thick and you regret life uh, no, sorry. i don't get that reference but uh you didn't do the goth scene but but the but the old goth in the other room does yeah it's not like at the moment it's not like a cloud it's not poofy and, and fluffy and no no it's awful it's a bit like hell it's not going to help you escape is it better or worse than cat poop it's better than cat poop yeah 
So, again, on why the shit does this keep happening? Hey, you've stolen a car! You know who you don't go to for assistance? The police? Fucking again! Man in stolen truck with dead battery asks deputy for a jump start. No! A truck you stole has a dead battery, it might be best to ask someone besides a sheriff's deputy for a jump start. And yes, this is Florida. <sighs> Gordon Raymond, 25, uh, was during an encounter on March 21st, uh, was driving a Chevrolet truck. Deputy relayed the truck's tags to emergency dispatchers. Man later identified as Raymond approached the deputy and said the battery in his truck died and he had a jump start. Meanwhile, dispatchers indicated the truck was reported stolen days earlier. He said he was at a bar in Jensen Beach and that he closed at when it closed at 2 a.m. He noticed his girlfriend left him without a way to get home. He started walking and saw a truck in a church parking lot. The keys were in the truck, so he decided to drive it home. Not call a cab. Mr. Raymond stated that at the time, taking the truck seemed like his best option. He had no other way to get home. He also said he'd been taking the truck to and from work. Oh. I mean, I only used it that one time, except for those six other times. And that one time was totally emergency. And then it's not like I had the owner's address to bring it back. So I just kept it. Finders you, keepers, right? You remember when you were a kid? And it was a church parking lot, so clearly Jesus wanted him to have it. <laughs> Jesus left those keys in there for me. Exactly. It was probably even under like a parking lot streetlight, so it looked like it had like a holy glow on it. You remember when you were a kid and there were a plate of cookies? And it was and it was like if you grabbed it and claimed it, it was legally yours, and everyone was and sort of like it. Yeah, you had to lick it. You had to lick every cookie. Everyone pretty much be like, it sucks, but it's his. The law says so. It's his. That's not how it works when you grow up. Possession is not really nine tenths. That's a that's a lie. That yeah, that is, is a lie. That, that is, is kind that of is a lie. not true. That that is not how it works. It from a church. From a church. Come on. You know better. And that's the kind, like, my mom always used to scold me when I went to church with her for leaving my purse in the pew when we went up to receive communion. And I was like, dude, if someone's going to jack my purse here, like, this this seems like it should be the one place you can trust someone not to jack your purse not for five really. minutes. Your mom was right. No, no, your I mom know. was right. Your mom was right. I know. But I, I felt like, you know what, if you need to jack my purse in church, you probably need whatever's in it more than I do. <sighs> No, they don't. They, it's between you and your maker. They, they really don't. So, have you ever watched one of those uh, those TV shows where a guy will attempt to do this elaborate ruse to trick someone into liking them? Like, they'll set up... You mean, like, the election? Oh, funny. 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 No, you, you, this, you, there's a girl, a guy wants her to like Pick him. Pick artist crap? <clears throat> well, like, you know, you've never seen shows where someone be like, I will save the, I, you'll pretend to do this, and I'll swoop in and save the day, and she'll like me. They'll set it up with their, you've never seen that, really. Like on a crummy sitcom, yeah. Well, someone decided this was a good plan. Not for a crummy sitcom, for the real world. Fake felonies still count. Franklin County Court. Man conducts bogus robbery to help another man win back his girlfriend. Frankfurt man pleaded guilty Friday in Franklin Circuit Court to three counts of first-degree wanton endangerment for his role in a fake robbery that was part of an elaborate plan for a man he knew who wanted to change his status from scorned boyfriend to superhero. Alas, Commonwealth's attorney Larry Cleveland said their, their plan went awry. Mark Anthony Byrd, 22, of Frankfurt, who was known to the victims in this case, approached the two men and a woman who were sitting inside a vehicle in a parking lot. The space partially covered, brandished a handgun, and demanded money. 
However, Cleveland said the victims, being young people sitting in a car listening to rap music late at night when the robbery scheme took place, were able to hand over little more than a cell phone and a cigarette lighter. The original first-degree robbery charges were amended to three counts of first-degree wanton endangerment under the terms of a plea agreement because Bird had punched one of the men in the vehicle and pistol-whipped another. Another person who heard the incident and came to help was also pistol-whipped. Here's the thing, fellas. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with some knowledge. Mm. If a girl dumps you, this is not going to help. No. Calling her a slut is not going to help. Leaving her 62 voicemails is not going to help. No. Revenge porn is not going to help. No. None of that's going to get you back. None of it's going to make you feel any better about yourself. None of it's going to make any other girl want to touch your penis ever. And you might wind up in jail. And I like, love... You I, just gotta move on. I love the guy he got to fake the robbery kind of got a little too into character and started <laughs> dealing on people. No, no, man, I'm method. I'm method acting. It's cool. It's No, you're not. It's not cool. Because the other person came over and you hit them too. Guess what? They're not in on the joke. They're going to press charges. Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? Stop the pro! It's all part of the bit. It's cool. You know what's worse than getting dumped? Hmm. Jail. Jail. Definitely worse than getting dumped. Because now you got dumped and you're going to jail. Yeah. Just, just, just stop it dumped. Everybody gets dumped. Not everybody goes to jail. Not everybody has to go to jail. Well, we have more going to jail. You know, I've got to hand it to this guy at least. It, let's start off with the negative. Driving drunk, that's a negative. Should never fucking do that, you asshole. But I at least have to hand it to him. He came up with a creative way to attempt to elude the whole getting charged with, with driving drunk, which is kind of, it's, it's, it's something in politics that happens a lot. When you're, you've done something, accuse your opponent of doing the exact same thing, mm -hmm. and it will throw, it will deflect attention from you. Right. Aikido. That is not how it works with drunk driving. Drunk man makes fake DUI checkpoint, gets charged with DUI. Wait, what? Somerset, Pennsylvania. A Pennsylvania man set up a fake drunken driving checkpoint only to be charged with drunk driving himself when real troopers arrived to investigate. 20-year-old Logan Shawless will be sentenced June 27th. He pled guilty Thursday to drunk driving, possessing instruments of crime, and impersonating a public, a public servant. Police say Shawless used a flashing blue light bar, parked diagonally across Route 601, and set up road flares... On May 30th, a motorist who stopped says Charlotte claimed he was a trooper with, quote, the drug and alcohol division, demanded a CR identification. When police arrived, Charlotte tried to hand a BB pistol to the car's passenger, saying he couldn't get caught with it. So the person he had pulled over, ostensibly pretending to be a police officer... When other police officers arrive, suddenly he's handing this person a gun saying, shit, you gotta take this for me. No, really, you gotta take this for me. There's no drug and alcohol division of anything. No. No. Is this like hiding in plain sight? <laughs> I guess, like... Now, obviously, I am not the drunk driver. I am the police officer. Right. So, ipso facto, <laughs> ergo, et tu brute, I cannot <laughs> be the drunk driver. Exactly. QED. Esquire. Esquire, yes. That's not how that works. This is the kind of plan only a drunk person comes up with. It was, it was, this is perfect crime. This is fucking perfect. They're, they're like never going to figure this out. 
Oh, uh, shit. Can you take this? I can't get caught with this. Aren't you a cop? Don't. Yeah, but I'm like way deep undercover. You yes. pulled us over. <laughs> Look, just shut up, cop. I, oh no. How was he going to write tickets? How was he going to test? Like, generally at a DUI checkpoint, they do some tests. Generally. How was he going to do that? Okay, can you say alphabet? Alphabet. <laughs> can you say letters backward? <laughs> I, I want you. was a cop, and at my nephew's first communion party, he took my my sisters and all my cousins into the garage and gave everybody the sobriety test. Everybody, including said cop, was hammered at the time. But my sister, like, nailed it. I want you to touch your nose like me. <laughs> Wait, just touch, touch, re extend your touch. Like, did he have a bong he was asking them to blow into as a breathalyzer? Too? <laughs> that would really be the cherry on top of the stupid. Yeah. Well, finally this week, we have another We Got Video. Get ready to grab your pants, folks, because this this is Jesus God. Are, are we going to need pants for this? You might need a change of pants. Oh. This is a harrowing. Have a look at this. This comes to us from a tiny little airport in the Caribbean called Gustav III Airport. Gustav III. Watch this guy. See how that plane just watching real super slow motion. <gasps> that grain just, that plane smacked his knuckles. Video shot by Sebastian Polinero. I think I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. Um, well, it's Politano, so no. Politano, I'm saying that wrong, yeah. <laughs> uh, of St. Martin, Guadalupe, confirms the dangerous nature of the approach as it appears to show a small plane grazing a tourist trying Holy to take shit. photographs as it approached. Politano, 46, was testing out his 360-degree camera at the traffic circle where this happened. At the end of the video, the man in the white t-shirt and flowery shorts can be heard saying what sounds like it hit me. At what point do you not get the fuck out of the way? Well, this this there's a plane, and it's clearly coming toward you very, very close. I would hit the fucking deck. Are you kidding me? You stand there and take a picture. Well, apparently this happens quite often at the well. At least this this super low approach. Oh, jeez, I keep watching it. Happens quite often at this airport. And this, they just leave a traffic circle there. Yeah, this this where is, people can just be. Yep. That seems like poor city planning. So, knowing that this is a hideously dangerous thing to do, why in God's name would you get in front of the fucking plane? Because you're a fucking moron? This will be a great shot. You're lucky to be alive! Yeah. A few inches lower, and I wouldn't be able to do this story, because your head would be gone. Yeah. Like gone over that little cliff, rolling down the runway. And imagine you're in the plane. You're already flying into this crazy ass airport where you have to fly at this really stupid fucking approach. And suddenly there's this jackass in front of you. You probably just dropped a load in your shorts trying to land that plane. I don't understand how you just stand there and take the picture. Like, there's Brave, and there's Angling for Your Darwin Award. I have to wonder, does plane insurance cover passenger strikes? Pedestrian hits? Yeah, does, does it cover pedestrian hits? I'm thinking probably not, because that seems pretty fucking unlikely. <laughs> I could be wrong. So there's another reason to be a little concerned when this you see this guy, you're trying to land the plane. Your insurance doesn't go to cover that. Maybe get the fuck out of the way of the airplane. Get out of the way of the plane. It's it's not... Yeah, there's... And I'm saying that I live in fucking Jersey, where pedestrians have no respect for fucking anything. Goddamn Sherman tank could roll down my street. 
They'd walk in front of it. Some 90-year-old bitch with her dog is going to just walk out right in front of it because they don't give a fuck because it's Jersey. I feel like they'd still get out of the way of the goddamn plane. Yeah. Because it's a plane. How bad has it gotten with this airport when they're com- they're this immune to it? They're just inured to the whole... Like everyone thinks that's fucking normal. <sighs> that's not normal. That's... Move that traffic circle. So, yeah, I guess the, the first thing... Why do we have to say... The first thing we learned tonight is... Get out of the way of airplanes! Don't fuck with airplanes. They will win. Airplanes win. Airplanes They're beat bigger you. Than you. It's like rock, paper, scissors, only airplane beats everything. I know that Disney movie made them look really fucking friendly. They're not your friends. That Disney movie did not make them look friendly. That Disney movie made them look awful. I didn't see it. I'm assuming it made them look friendly because it's a Disney movie. Yeah. I, I... And because living with a nine-year-old, I watched Cars approximately 400 times, and those cars were really friendly. Cars made me want to watch a lot of NASCAR just for the accidents. <laughs> you know what pissed me off most about Cars? Why were the windshields the eyes? <laughs> Not the headlights. The Fucking wind... anthropomorphic. I can't pronounce the word. You know the word I'm thinking of. Say it for me. Anthropomorphic. You can't do it either. I can't do it either. Well, there goes us being impressive. That's 101. Obviously, the headlights are the eyes. Not the fucking windshield. Weirded me out because then you can't see in the cars. And what is this world where there are cars but no people? It's like a post apocalyptic world where the machines have risen. It doesn't seem like a friendly place. And yet it is anthropomorphic. Thank you. Yeah. Someone wrote it out phonetically for me because I'm an idiot. <sighs> We've learned that if you can't beat them, join them does not work for a DUI checkpoint. No. But it's a great interpretation of that phrase. We've learned that elaborate hoaxes and schemes are not the way to mend your love life. Just because you saw them do some crazy shit on Friends does not mean it's going to work in real life. Almost never should you take your cues for your love life from romantic comedies or television, because most of that shit will get you arrested. Those are lies. Those are lies. We've learned that Finders Keepers does not apply to Grand Theft Auto. No. Even if it's a church. Even if it's a church. We've learned that smoke bombs... Don't exactly work the way they work on TV. Fire extinguishers don't, well, we don't either. We don't know that because he didn't try a smoke bomb. He tried a fire extinguisher. Fire okay. extinguishers are not smoke bombs. Maybe if he had a smoke bomb, it would have worked. <sighs> you silly bastard. And finally tonight, we learned that the fire department, we taught you this. This is remedial at this point. The fire department is never going to call you and tell you to start smashing your own shit no they'll show up and if it needs to be smashed they'll smash it for you yeah that's a public service they provide it is they will smash your shit for you they will merrily smash your shit also if the building's gonna blow from a gas leak you're probably gonna smell the gas Mm. yeah just something to keep in mind this is before you start smashing shit You pay taxes so you don't have to smash shit. I mean, I can see. Like, it's fun, I'm sure. I would love to smash the shit out of my place of work. Who wouldn't? I would love authorization to fucking wreck their workplace. Me, because I live here. 